Hi, and welcome back to the 21 Convention 2018. Uh, I am Rolo Tomasi, and I am going to be bringing on our next speaker. Our next speaker is a, a good personal friend of mine, and he's become a good personal friend of mine because when I was looking to find uh, some good speakers for the Red Pill Summit that this uh, convention has become, uh, last year um, I had come across uh, his work uh, with the Family Alpha, and that was the name of his blog. And I thought that that was kind of a uh, kind of a bold move to uh, include Red Pill awareness and to include uh, positive masculinity, really. Uh, into uh, a marriage environment, into long-term relationships. And I think that this is one of the one of the misnomers and the misunderstandings, really, uh, about the red pill is that it's only for pickup artistry. It's only for certain aspects. But I think what people unfamiliar with the red pill need to understand is that there's so much more application for it. And so, after encountering Mr. Drew here. Uh, we, we kind of had a relationship, I guess. We kind of had a, uh, uh, a I don't know, some, some good talks, and I helped him with, uh, with his starting his blog, and he's really kind of developed himself into a side of the red pill that I really think needs to be addressed. Uh, he is also the co-founder of Fraternity of Excellence, which is another uh, thing that I think is really great for you know helping guys who are a little bit more traditionally minded. Uh, and so, anyways, without further ado, I'm going to bring on Mr. Hunter Drew. <laughs> okay. All right, I am Hunter Drew. And before I get started into my speech, I want to give a thanks, a quick thanks. Now, as I say thank you to these men, you're going to want to give them a round of applause because the work they've done is absolutely incredible. So first, I'm going to start. Don't give them the round of applause, though. I'll mess everything up. First, we're going to start with Anthony Johnson. The man has put all of this on his back and carried us across to where we are today. The amount of work he's done for me to be on this stage is because he gave me the green light. That's not easy. The venues, the transportation, the restaurants, everything, the security, that's on him. He's carried that, he's made that his mission, he's living it out. That's incredible. The second thanks is a mentor of mine, is the man who just brought me on. Rolo Tomasi is the Don, we all know this. What you don't know is the work that he does behind the scenes. He's never gonna ask for credit. He's never gonna to, to say, hey, look what I did, look at me, when you were reaching behind asking for help. He's an individual who helped me and nobody knew it. And he wasn't gonna tell anybody about it. Most recently, I decided to give up alcohol. All right, and it was a terrible time because I've been comped this entire time and I have to keep saying no, which is terrible. Free drinks, and I'm like, shit, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> but hey, I talked to Roll behind the scenes a while back. He said, hey, man, we got to dial this in. You know, you're, you're like a freaking party animal. You know, and I was like, you know what? That was controlling me. I didn't get a DUI. I didn't have any issues like that. But I was like, I, re I did not have control over it. And that, um, as men, we need to have control of our vices, not them over us. So that's a pill I had to swallow. It was hard. Roll was there. He didn't tell anybody about that. That's a conversation we had offline. So that's another one. Third. The only reason the Family Alpha is still in operation and the only reason that I was around to co-found the Fraternity of Excellence with Craig James is because of Ivan Throne. I had a really, it was zero dark 30. We're talking 1.30 in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, sitting in his room. I had every intention of shutting down my blog last 21 con. I was busy. It was enough. I was trying to lead my family. I thought I had too much going on, and I didn't think I was needed. I saw all the other great resources. What's the point of having a married dude with two kids out here talking about this? And then Ivan said, hey, you're like a freaking lighthouse. You're keeping the other men from crashing on the rocks. You're giving a signal. You're throwing a rope. And in that room, I decided I'm going all in. I'm going balls to the wall. And without him here, I would not be here. I would not be online anymore. And anything you've ever gained from me, for those who have found anything from my work, that man right there is where you bring your thanks, not me. I'm only creating because he was there for me when I needed him. So those are my three thanks. Now we're going to start spinning into the talk. So. Writing for the manosphere is like having Asperger's. You're somewhere on a spectrum. No. <laughs> the problem with me, normally you find yourself, I'm in the red spectrum. I'm a purple pill life coach over here spectrum. I'm in this spectrum. When it comes to where I'm at, I'm all over the fucking place. I'm blue pill, I'm red pill. I'm purple pill, I'm crimson red. I'm the family cuck, I'm a hobbit. 
I'm the red pill beta. I've been all over the damn place. I don't even know what the hell I am. But throughout it all, I've not given a fuck. I'm Hunter fucking Drew. That's what I am. And I'm going through all of this as such. So when I hear all these things, you're this. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm me. No, you're going to be that. No, I'm me. I'm going to keep doing it. You suck. Get offline. You suck. Stay on Reddit. <laughs> I've got my website. Come find me. So when you look at it, people were not able to influence me. And that's something that I'm noticing with those who speak to the speakers. I'm realizing I've got that irrational confidence. I've got that belief in self that's not allowing these, these outside influences to change my message. I'm not allowing anybody to dictate what it is I'm going to say. I'm not going to say what you want to hear. I'm going to say what I have to say. I'm not going to say what sells. I'm going to say what I have to fucking say because that's me. I can't give you anything else except for my personality, except for my perspective on the world. Now, one of the problems that was really irking me is that a lot of men think they aren't good enough. When somebody tells them, you suck, you're right, I suck, I should stop writing. Hey, you know, you, you can't achieve this. Oh, shit, you're right. I shouldn't, I can't achieve that. I'm not capable, I'm not good enough. No, that's a fucking lie. That's what's been told to you from feminism, from everybody that's trying to break you down from birth. You are good enough and you had a fire when you were born. When you were young, you had that masculine fire. You wanted to play in the mud. You wanted to run around. You wanted to climb things. You wanted to jump. You wanted to fight. You wanted to just explore. You had a fire inside that was raw. But then something started putting it out. You know, that flame, you started going from a 10 to a 9, 9 to an 8. Maybe it was your teachers. Maybe, you know, you didn't have a mentor. Maybe dad left. You have all these reasons. And you're saying it's because of my past. Because my past left. You know, because my dad left. You know, that's why I wasn't able to achieve it. You know, hey, it's okay, because this happened to me, that's why I can't achieve that. You know, my past is preventing me from doing this. My foundation, I don't have a solid foundation to build upon, so of course, you're right, I can't achieve this. And you listen to people, and then that fire goes out. And when that fire goes out, you stop chasing your mission, you become numb, you become apathetic, you stop having passions, you stop caring about anything going on because you're just like, fuck it, I'll do my nine to five, I'll get married, have kids, get fat, kill myself, have divorce, get divorced, fucking whatever it is. That's, that's the story, right? That's what they keep telling you. Yet I'm standing on this goddamn stage. I'm married, two kids, having a great time. Not because I'm I am the most average dude in here. Look at me. I am nothing special. I'm the goddamn midget of this whole fucking convention. You've been hearing it the entire time. Yet I come up here and my presence takes over because I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to let you say, hey, 5'8", <laughs> hobbit. And it's not even a hobbit. It's a fucking dwarf. I have a beard. You guys should know this. <laughs> a goddamn dwarf. I'm not Bilbo, man. I'm Gimli. So I'm going to give you a quick background of myself so you can kind of see, hey, shit that happened to you happens to everyone. It's what you do with it. You don't let your past define you. You don't let who you were dictate who you are. When I was younger, I was a product, I was a single, I had a single mom. My parents got split up, so it was me and my mom. She found another guy, they had kids. Life was great, right? They had my brother and sister who are twins. At five, when they're two, my mom kills herself. So now I'm going from a single mom upbringing to I lost my mom. I'm a product, I'm a child of suicide. Oh, man, I, that should start sucking. You know, that's terrible. I should start feeling bad. I've got every justification in the world to say why I can't win. And I'm only five years old, and I can start saying, that's why. I didn't succeed because suicide, because single mom. Then I found this manual, and it's a really good one. You guys have probably found it, too. It's called How to Be a Nice Guy. And I wanted to win that game. I was going to be the best nice guy that could be, because that's what movies told me, because that's what stories told me, that's what books told me. My dad was in the Navy, so he was always in and out. So there was no permanent father figure for me. When he came in, it was great. We're going to do man shit. But that's cool for a week, and then you're gone for two months. That's not a permanent, that's not an impact on you. So I'm reading, hey, how do you get girls? Well, you, you share your feelings. Well, <laughs> they don't like muscles. They like when you cry. You should cry. Cry in front of a girl. Man, make some flood. That's how you get chicks. That's what I was, I was a product of the nice guy syndrome, trying to out nice guy the nice guys. Then I joined the Navy. And in the Navy kind of unfucked myself. I realized for the first time in my life, my future was in my control. The Navy, the, the military is not difficult. You go to boot camp, it is not physically difficult, it is not mentally difficult, but when you're alone, when you're put out there to say, hey, perform and you get something, or don't and you don't. I learned, hey, it pays to be a winner. Hey, if I try hard, I get things. If I get motivated and I get my team pumped up, we all win, and when we all win, every, it's like a rising tide. All those boats go up. That's kind of leading me to where we're at right now. When you do something, when you take control of your fire, you can spread it to others. You can pass that on. So in the Navy, that's where I learned that. Now, before I joined the Navy, in high school, I met my wife, girlfriend then. 
We started dating. Joined the Navy, life is great. I do that for eight years. I was five years on a ship, two deployments, then three years on instructor duty. Fantastic, greatest time of my life. It was just an adventure every single freaking day. After my first deployment, I married my girlfriend, became a wife after five years of us dating. We had my son. I then go to shore duty. We have my daughter. I'm then presented with a choice. I'm up for orders. I can either go back to a ship and deploy. See, the Navy's a little different than the other branches. You're always in and out. I told you the story about my dad. Home for a week, gone for a month. Home for two weeks, gone for two months. Then you deploy. I realized, after having a son and a daughter, I could either be a good sailor or I could be a good father. When I was young, I wanted to be Conan. I wanted to be Conan, have my chick in a loincloth, freaking going around like leopard print, and then like a bunch of children just running around. I knew I wanted a family. My decision was made for me. It wasn't even throw a bonus at me, throw in, in, increased rank. Didn't matter. I was getting out. So I jumped without knowing where it's going to land. I left the Navy, which is a great career. I was doing very well for myself. And I said, I'll figure it out. Found a job. Pretty cool. Things are good. Then I hit a rough patch. My wife and I went through some things. My, my white picket fence, you know, the, the Disney, the, the fairy tale, it was destroyed. It crashed into the ground. It shattered, burned in the flames. And I was prevented with a choice. Go or stay. I stayed. I then came back, though. You fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with you. And I hit it back. And then she was presented with a choice. So coming up, she made her decision. Go or stay. She decided to stay. Now, the beauty behind that, and I don't wish anybody on this storyline, but if you find yourself in a situation like this, is you're no longer together because you're trying to keep up with something. You're no longer together because you're trying to make the storybook last. You want to do the high school sweetheart story. No, you're together because you chose to be together. It's crazy, but it works. As I was going through that, I created the Family Alpha. Now, before creating the Family Alpha, I was on the Red Pill subreddit as well as Married Red Pill subreddit. You won't see me on the Red Pill because A, they're quarantined, but B, they blacklisted me. You won't see me on Married Red Pill because Ryan Stone banned me. He won't admit it because he's being a polite Canadian fuck, but he, he gave me the boot. He said, ah, go, go do that shit somewhere else. So I was like, fine, I'll do my own website. We're going to do it that way. So we got the family alpha going, and it's great. And then I found, we, ran, we did a 21Con, and that was a game changer. That's where this happened. That's where I got to see men and rub shoulders with men and see, holy shit, this isn't just talking online. This is some real world shit. This matters. This is changing lives. This is changing a political, or a social landscape. This is what's going to change, make a generational change to where our children, my children, might see a different future than what I, the one I'm facing right now. You know, a lot of guys talk about, oh, it's doom and gloom. It's going to get so much worse before it gets better. They're absolutely correct. But that's as a whole. In my bubble, I'm trying to keep that off. I'm trying to fight that back. And I do that from that 21 con, I realized, holy shit. Ivan, I already mentioned it. Hey, get up, man. You're a lighthouse. You're a torch. A lighthouse, you're keeping men from smashing into the ground. You're putting a message out there, preventing them from hitting rock bottom. Maybe they can pull up before they hit those rocks. That's what you're doing. A torch. It's a dark fucking world. This world does not care about you. Honestly, the world's trying to kill you, if you really look at it. But the world doesn't care. But when you have that torch in that dark world and you hold it in the air, another man might see it. He might start walking towards you. And when he finds you, he's like, wow, hey, brother, what are you up to? Hey, I'm doing this. Check it out. This is working for me. I feel good. I'm alive. I'm a man in a society that hates men. And I'm, shoulders back, I'm proud. I'm having a great fucking time. Here, let me light your torch. Go over there. He goes his way, I go mine, but now there's two torches. And that's what we're doing. We're lighting torches. We're helping men realize there is a purpose to this. So I come back from last 21 con, then we have December of Discipline, which is the 31 DTM campaign. And Craig James has this brilliant idea. Let's create a tribe, let's create our own. That's where the Fraternity of Excellence came in. Co-founded that. Then we ran Men of March, September of Success, and now I'm here. That's how I got to this stage. I have many opportunities to say, hey, I'm out of this. I, I, I can't achieve anything. I was a product of a single mom. I was a product uh, of a child of suicide. Hey, I grew up without a, a masculine role model. I've got all the, the reasons that a lot of men here have told me that that's why I suck. I can't do this because of that. I can't do this because of that. Who you were doesn't make you who you are. I spent five years in high school. I was a fucking loser. Like, I, I just couldn't get it. But then I joined the Navy, got out of that, and something clicked. This is your opportunity for something to click. Recognize that. Now, why do I keep writing 
Why do I keep going to, to these things? Why do I keep putting stuff out? Why do I work you know, on the fraternity when I could just simply take the easy life of raising my kids? Well, is it because I want a future for my son where men like you will raise your sons in a manner where he'll have peers? There'll be other little masculine motivated men running around? I fucking hope so. That's part of it. For damn sure, I hope I plant those seeds in your minds to where you're like, hell yeah, your kid's going to find my kid and they're going to go be beasts and go out there. I coach his baseball team. I was talking to Ryan Stone earlier. I hope I'm raising a bunch of like chads and they're just going to take over. And they're going to be like, man, my coach, coach Drew was a fucking beast because I held him to his standard. I set that example. I've got that torch and I'm lighting theirs. All those little flames are running around. I'm allowing them to be men. I'm giving them discipline. Hey, you don't get a trophy for showing up. You get a trophy for putting out. You get a trophy for winning. You get a trophy for giving it your all. And even if you lose, you gave it your all so you get some respect. Maybe you didn't win, but you learned a thing or two about where your limits are. And sometimes you've got to cross that line and fall on your face to find out how far you can go. A lot of kids don't have that. A lot of kids are robbed of that. A lot of us were robbed of that. Am I here because of my daughter? Got a beautiful six-year-old girl. That's fucking rough. Going in there. As a father, you don't pass your daughter off to, to the mom. That's a part of it. Your daughter's going to emulate the mother. But as a man, you're going to set the standard of what it is for the men that she's looking for. You're going to set the bar from which she measures all other men. Set a high fucking bar. She'll bring back motivated men. She'll know what it is you're looking for, what it is you expect, how families should operate. Because when you feel the masculine and your wife's allowed to feel the feminine, your son is allowed to see the masculine. Your daughter's allowed to see the feminine. Hey, these are my roles. Here's how I support. Hey, your son's like, hey, here's how I lead. You can do that. You can do that for nephews, nieces, your friends' kids. You can provide them with something that they don't normally have and that's lacking significantly in our society today. The last thing in my hair for my brotherhood. That's part of it. Like I said, I met Ivan last year. I met all these guys last year. I met new guys this year. It's incredible. But that's not what this is about. See, what this is about is I'm here because I see the strings that are controlling the system. I'm here because I saw the wizard behind the curtain. Except that fucking wizard is the, the female imperative, the anti-masculine messages that are always being spread in movies. And once you see it, you cannot unsee it. And once you see it, how can you go to bed at night knowing that there are men out there struggling? How can you not want to set the example that'll break the shackles and allow this to be free? Think about it. Looking back on my life, there were times I, would, I had a friend, pretty fat, and I, I'll always remember this. He was doing the truffle shuffle, because that was his thing, because he was fat, and he could do it perfectly, the perfect jiggle. He had that perfect donut, and it would wiggle. It was fucking awesome. But one time, it was pretty funny, as the dude. You know what's not funny? When you look over on the couch and you see his wife putting her head in her hand, shaking it. It's pretty funny when you see your friends doing those Homer Simpson jokes and, you know, quoting Peter Griffin. That is pretty funny. They've got some great one-liners. Ha ha, look at that's quagmire. Here's what you don't see. You don't see the man alone in this bed wondering why the fuck his wife won't touch him. You don't see the man sitting there screaming into a pillow because he doesn't know what's wrong. He's doing everything he's told is right. He's following the path. He's doing the nice guy things. He's providing. He's working. He, he's, he's giving everything he has to this family, yet no one respects him. No one's looking and saying, hey, good job. I appreciate what you're doing. So then he looks at that gun. He looks at that rope. He's driving to work, and every single fucking day, he's looking at the media and saying, what if I just fucking turn the wheel? What if I just hit it? What if today is the day because I've had enough? That is why I'm here. That shit stays inside my head. I see it. I see when I see my family who's overweight, trying to be confident. Ha ha, let's go play football. I know that they're sitting there going into their room afterwards trying to catch their fucking breath because they can't breathe. I know they're embarrassed when they go to the beach. I know they got their shirt on because they're, they're ashamed of who they are. But they can't talk about it because they've got to put on that persona. They've got to keep smiling. Everything's okay. But everything isn't okay. It isn't. It just simply isn't. And you can see it. You can see in the eyes. They don't lie. They'll never lie. You can see the sadness. You can see that void. That's why I'm here. I hope that something I say plants that seed. More importantly, I hope we light our flames. That comes from Ivan. That's what he did for me. And I realize that's exactly what I want to talk about this 21 con. I'm married. We can talk about marriage. I'm a father. We can talk about fatherhood. But the most important thing you can take from this is a lit fucking torch inside your soul. Now, that's all a build up to the introduction to this speech. <laughs> Just realized that. <laughs> the speech 
is the flame of freedom. Last speech, the audacity of authenticity. I've got a thing for alliteration. Now, Swift, I know that's a big word. I'll get you the definition after. But you know what I'm talking about. That fire, that's what you felt when you were out smoking cigars. That's what you felt when we were out there talking shit. That fire inside, that's what you felt when we were over here rubbing shoulders, kind of giving each other jabs, walking down the street, your shoulders are back, because I've got freaking Ivan, Ivan to my left, I got Swift at my six, I've got a bunch of motivated dudes walking over here, you're talking to Jack Donovan, having drinks, you're like, holy shit, I'm a fucking man. This is what it's about. And many of you said exactly that. This is what the fuck it's about. This is it. That's the fire I'm talking about. It's something burning inside you. You felt that, chi- that, that what you felt when you were a child. That childhood flame, that pure masculine energy. I call it a fire, you can call it whatever the hell you want. To me, it's a fire because that goes with the flame of freedom. But you light it, and it starts burning. And the worst thing you can possibly do is let that pile of light go out when you leave here. That's what this is about. You've got to carry what it is you're feeling, that burning inside. You want to do so? Everybody says, I want things to change. How about you change? How are things going to change unless you light those fires in others? I'm not saying let's start our tribes and start running around, but you act as the example. You have to just have a conversation. They'll come to you once they see you smiling. People are going to follow your example. They're not going to follow your advice. You can say, hey, son, you should work out and you should read. The kid's going to be like, dad, you've been watching Netflix for 52 weeks straight. You haven't read a book in a fucking like three years. What? <laughs> no, that's not how it works. That's the same thing with your friends. As a father, you can bring your child with you to the gym. As a father, you can have your kid watching the videos that you're watching. If you're watching some educational, you'll be like, hey, look, check this out. I'm learning about whatever. See, we're going to use this technology as a tool. We're not going to use it as a toy. We're not going to sit here and use our television as something that we can numb ourselves with. We're going to use it as something that can educate us. Tablet toddlers are the worst thing in the goddamn world. Because you're too lazy as a parent to to, to raise your own child. You plug them in front of a TV or you plug them in front of a tablet and that's it. And there's no moderation. Hey, go to town. Everything. I'm going to go do something that's not going to improve me at all. I'm probably going to sit and relax. You stay there in front of the screen. Husbands, a lot of our boyfriends, LTRs, whatever you are. You look at your girl. Oh, she's naggy. Oh, she's harping. I'm not getting sex. She's a fucking mirror. She's reflecting your performance as a man. She's reflecting what you've done and what you've created and what you've allowed. If you don't draw boundaries and enforce them, it's not a boundary. That's a fun fact for you. If you say, don't do this, and she does, and you're like, okay, well, don't do it next time. That's not how that works. You set the standard from which excellence will be measured with yourself. You set the example by acting, by doing, by being the the, the message that you're sending into the world. You can't just say it. This is not how it works. (laughs) And for men, maybe not a father, Maybe you're not a boyfriend. Maybe you're just doing your own thing. And I'm not saying MGTOW. I'm just saying maybe you're just a dude trying to find yourself in the world. By you sitting there and just, just reclaim, going to the gym, you leave here and you're like, guys, I'm dying this shit. I'm sick of it. I'm getting rid of the excess weight. I'm getting rid of the lack of definition that I have. You know, I'm going to start eating right. I'm going to start finding a hobby. You know, I, I, I kind of slipped away because I got a little more comfortable relaxing at home playing fucking Fortnite. You know, I'm going to get back to, to building motorcycles. I'm going to get back to riding my mountain bike. I'm going to get back to riding my motorcycle. Doing something. That is how you set the example for others. That is how you light a fire. You don't have to walk up to them and say, hey, we're going to lead the next crusade and fight feminism. That's not what it's about. That doesn't work. What you can do is simply own your shit. Live your life. Set your example and others will follow. They will see it. They will wonder, why are you so happy when everybody else is so fucking sad? I've got family members who will not admit that I help them dial in their fitness, dial in, you know, their, their hobbies, yet I know it. Because once I started working out and lifting, I was like, hey, dad, you want to come with me? Hey, brother, cousin, whatever, come with me, friend. No, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I started lifting. Oh, wow, looking a little bit better. Those arms are growing, believe it or not. Hey, all of a sudden, yeah, you got it. All of a sudden... <laughs> They start doing the same. It's not about you getting a, a pat in the back. It's not about them saying, hey, thank, thanks, Hunter, for doing that for me. No, it's just about helping your fellow men. You don't get accolades for that. That's what men do. They own their shit. And when others are there that need help, you're there to help them. But by setting that example and lighting that fire, all of a sudden you see you went to 21Con, 
you got to see Hunter Drew, you got to see all these fantastic speakers who are putting out this solid content. They don't have that. So you've got to embody all 30 speakers or however many there are. That's all inside you. You've got to embody every single thing you learned in here and pass that on to yours and those around you. That's how you make change. That's how you bring change into the world. You keep saying you want to see, but you don't want to act. You don't want to work for it. When you work on yourself, that will bring that change. I'm fucking so sick of people saying, oh, we got to change the landscape. Oh, there's a war against men. So what are you going to do about it? Just keep fucking talking? That's just, that, again, talking about things is not how it works. You know, I live a, to the motto of acta non verba, which is Latin for deeds, not words. It's what you do. It's not what you say. You could read a thousand books. You can read a hundred blog posts. That makes you a well-read man. That doesn't change your life. That makes you an individual who learned a lot of shit. That's great. You know a lot of things. What are you applying? I was talking earlier to Tanner. Him and Well-Built Style, I keep putting the content out. I was looking at pictures from last year. I was like, you know what? My fashion sucks. My style is awful. Look, looked at their content. Wow, this is what works. This is what works. This is what works. I could have just said, all right, I'm going to keep it closed, though. I'm not going to do anything. I just, now I know how fashion works. That doesn't change you. That doesn't change your appearance. You can look at all AJ's programs. Oh, I read Wolverine. I'm going to be fucking jacked. Hugh Jackman. I'm going to get it. I read it. I read it twice. Did you, did you lift? <laughs> did you move? Oh, no, you didn't. You're going to be the next Jackman, though, right? We laugh, but that's what guys are doing. It's your action that breaks the shackles of those around you. It's your action that allows others to break out of the mold that they've been forced into by society. It's you throwing those ropes, not by saying, hey, man, I'm throwing the rope, but by just saying, hey, look at me. I'm going to go fix myself. We don't have to keep doing this. And they'll see, hey, there's another way to live. I didn't know this, but there's another fucking way. You mean I don't have to say happy wife, happy life? A lot of guys don't even know there is an alternative. They have no idea there's another way to live. You're just gonna, you can't self-sacrifice your way to happiness. That's not how that works. You put others in front of you every single time saying, oh, I'll sacrifice for them. I'm not going to pursue my hobby. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to make sure I work really hard. I'm going to be able to buy this person this. But I, I can't take care of myself. When you find yourself in a situation like that, you've got to realize you are going to die a very sad and broken man. And you're going to be discarded because you were used up. You have nothing of value to bring to the table anymore. You've got to set yourself first. And I'm not saying in a selfish manner to which you are just a fucking prick. What I'm saying is, you've got to invest in you. You've got to learn to like you. Because once you like you, you're like, hey, man, I'll take care of you. And that you being yourself. <laughs> so realize, when I talk about breaking the shackles, when I talk about lighting that flame in others, I mean it. You are not going to see a change in your life from this convention unless you do something about it. There's no reason for you to come here, pay the money you did, Make the risks you did, and then leave here saying, I got to listen to some cool people. I got to hang out. I got to see AJ. I got to see Ryan, Rolo. Holy shit, Jack Donovan's fucking jacked. I got to see these guys. That's cool. I got to That's not what this is about. You're not here to be a fucking groupie, are you? You're here to fucking like, own your fucking masculinity. You're here to reclaim what you once had, that fire inside your soul. That's why you're here. And for some guys, they're like, shit, all right, this guy's just fucking rambling. That doesn't apply to me. But it definitely does, and a part of you know it does. You came here for a reason, because something was wrong. You came here because something wasn't right, and you were going to invest in yourself. Jack was talking about it. By getting here, you took the first step. You showed up. That's more than 90% of the people out there. Those guys will still continue to say, I want to change my life, but I don't want to do anything to change my life. I just want it to change. You guys are here. You're in the seats. But this doesn't get you to the finish line. It gets you to the starting point. It's what you do once you leave here that dictates you, what you took from it. You can say all day, oh man, 21 Con, it, that's it. That's my new starting point. That's the new foundation for which I'm gonna build the greatest self I've ever fucking seen in the goddamn world. Now, you can say that, but what are you gonna do when you get home? What are you gonna do when nobody's looking at you, when there's no more schedule, when there's no more dinners, when there's no more cigars? What are you gonna do then? Are you gonna take action? I certainly fucking hope so. There are a lot of quotes thrown at you. Socrates is saying, follow your biological imperative. You know, have the family reproduce. Rolo is saying, don't get married, though. Find a way to do it outside of that. You've got Richard Cooper saying, here's 19 things. I'm going to tell my son this. 
And you've got Ryan saying, well, fathers, they're not essential to this. And you're somewhere in the middle. Here's what you've got to understand. Your path is your path. What you want to do is what you want to do. Don't do something because you think I'm going to give you a high five for it. I don't give a shit. I thought that guy, Caleb Jones, or whatever his name was, that guy was awesome. I'm, a, I'm in a monogamous relationship with two kids, and that dude has got all sorts of shit going on. I thought that was cool as fuck. He's, he's a man. I mean, he truly, he's a man living his mission. I don't get, if you want to be a playboy, be a playboy. If, you, if that's what you want to do, if you want to be artistic, go out there and be artistic. Follow Goldman's example. The dude is a brilliant mind. He's a, he's a beautiful mind to see, the, the artwork that he comes out with. Find that in yourself. That's a beautiful thing. You want to be in an LTR? Be in an LTR. You want to go for marriage? I don't recommend it, but go for it. Do it. You know, I, fuck it. It's your life. Figure it out. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't like to hear. Not only do you have to own your choice, you have to own all the consequences of your choices. Everything that comes with the, the, the consequences that come with the choice you make, you own those too. You don't get to say, I want to be a playboy, and then you're like, man, I wish I had fucking kids. No, man, you make your decision, you stick with it. You factor all that in. You're going into it, you have to go into it with all the information armed, and that's what this is about. You're getting information. You do your research, and then you decide, I want to do this. Go forward and fucking do it, and then own the ever-living shit out of it, and everything that comes with it. I know damn well, if I were to get divorced, I'm going to lose a lot of shit. That's a risk I took. We're in a good spot now. I'm very happy. Love my life. Love my family. Love my wife. Everything's great. Next week, fucking could blow up. Who fucking knows? And if it does, I'll own it. It's not going to be resentment. It's not going to be fucking what if. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm like, hey, man, I tried. I at least tried. I went out and I tried something. And that's what you guys need to do. You've got to decide and try. Because you can't stay in this little apathetic, you know, purgatory that you're stuck in. You can't find yourself stuck in, like, I kind of think I want to do this, but I might want to do that, and it's okay if I do this. And guess what? Another year goes by. You're at 21 Con 2019 in the same exact spot you were in before because you can't make a damn decision. And again, that's a part of being a man, being able to decide, being able to own it, and being able to go forward. Now, all the speakers before me, they came up here and they gave some quality content. What are you doing with it besides putting it in a notebook? Are you thinking about your action plan? Like, hey, this is exactly what I needed. This, this is a stepping stone to get me to that next level of understanding of where I want to go. I hope so. Because if you're just sitting there listening, thinking this is like a, a concert, you're fucked up. You are incorrect. You know, you might not want to hear it. You might think this is a great hangout session, but that, that's not what this is. This is also not some giant self-help group. This is for you to arm yourself with the information you need to make the decision you know you need to make. But it's on you to make it. And again, if I see you in 21 Con 2019 and you haven't done a damn thing, that's on you, man. You should be disappointed in yourself. Now, I had a conversation with two dudes. I want to keep their identities. So one will be called Chad, the other will be called Thundercock. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Thundercock. Thundercock had to make a decision in the moment. Yes or no? Gas pedal down, gas pedal up. He's, I'm deciding. Gas pedal down. Go. Owned the decision, moved on. We were talking about it. Great shit. He made a decision, he moved on. Guess what? I'm not gonna give a percentage because I almost failed that class in college, but statistically, a lot of people would not be able to decide. They'd be like, I don't know, ah, fuck, I don't wanna commit. We'll, we'll go with yes for now, but maybe it's gonna be no later. No, he made a decision, stuck with it, he's not going back. Now let's go to Chad. Chad has a decision to make, but he's got a window to make it. He, he, has, he has a timeline to make it. He didn't have to make his at the same time as Thundercock. All right? A lot of you are gonna find yourself having to make a decision when you leave this place. You're gonna go home and you're gonna ask yourself, am I keeping these friends around? Is my family toxic? Do I need to change jobs? Do I have to dump this lady? Do I have to get a divorce? Do I have to break up? Do I need to go and, and find something new? Do I have to go move my fucking to, to somewhere else because that's where I have to go? I have to get to a new geographical location? These are all decisions like, fuck, I, I'm getting home, I'm making the decision. For some it's, hey, I need to go to the doctors. My fucking T levels are like 15. I'm struggling. I gotta go. I, you know, I gotta stop talking about how I've got a low T and start saying, hey, I'm gonna fix my low T. Because talking about a problem is for women. Finding a solution, that's what men do. Chicks love to talk like, hey, man, I got this problem. Do you need help? No, I just wanna talk about my problem. Cool. But if a guy does that to me, I'm like, I'm not your girlfriend. We're gonna find that we're gonna work towards a solution or shut the fuck up. You know, th there's no in between. Some of you are gonna go home though and like, Chad, you're gonna have a window. You're gonna know, hey, I've got, I've got some time to work on something, but a decision's coming up, and I have to be ready. And you've got to prepare yourself. It might be your health. It might be your wealth. 
you know, your mind, your body, your spirit. Something might be going on, and you know within the next six months to one year, you're going to have to make a major decision that's going to change your life forever. And you've got to be ready. You don't get to keep passing off and just being apathetic about everything. You've got to decide to move forward with your life. There's no other path. The last thing I want you to ask yourself. If the men inside 21Con, I keep going to this side because the flag's right behind me and it's patriotic as fuck. If the men, <laughs> if the men inside these walls, inside 21Con, which keeps on growing, like doubling and doubling and doubling, the standard keeps raising and raising and raising, if the men inside those walls aren't going to be the ones who change this landscape, then who is? You really need to ask yourself, if I'm not the man who's going to make that change inside my, my friendships, my community, my local sphere, who is? How many times are you going to look around and say, we've got problems? Guys, we've got fucking problems, because there are some serious problems we're all facing in our world. It might be your neighborhood. It might be the school district that you're in. There might be issues, you know, with the parent PTA and, you know, how they're, they're pushing kids. The, the scouts, whatever it is. You can't keep saying, hey, guys, we have problems. Somebody has to start working towards a solution. And if it's not the men inside this room, who's it going to be? This is it. When you look around, these are the people who are going to make a change. There's nothing like this in the goddamn world. What Anthony has created, I've said it's a game changer, not because I'm like, hey, hope I come back next year, but more because I want him to realize it is true. This is different than any other place you're going to go. You're not going to go to something that's going to talk about the topics we talk about. You're not going to find anybody else saying shit that you're not going to like to hear because a lot of places want to coddle you because that's how they do it. Hey, life is good. Everything's great. No, you're okay. You tried hard, buddy. That's good. That's not how it works. We're saying you've got to do the fucking work and you've got to get to where you want to go. If you're not willing to do that, you don't get to bitch about what's going on against men. You're a part of the problem. Guys don't like to hear that. Makes them uncomfortable. Shit, I haven't done anything. I read a blog. I got a podcast. I try to put shit out into the world. I try to be that lighthouse to help guys from crashing on the rocks. I've never fucking gone to a protest. You know, I've not pulled the Ivan throne where he rips the fucking flag out. But I'm trying to do something. That's me putting forth my effort. I coach my son's baseball team. And this isn't the, hey, look at me, I'm so fucking awesome. It's just simple examples of, look, I'm trying to do something to help change the landscape we're all talking about. What are you doing? What are you doing in your life that is going to change or make just the slightest impact for your children, if you have them, for your wife, if you've got one, for your brothers, if you, if you just have friends going around, or just for the men inside this goddamn room? You've spent nights with them. You're going to be spending a week with them. You make those friendships. You hear those stories. You hear about the men suffering. You find out what's going on. You realize, hey, this does fucking suck. This is brutal. A lot of guys have some bad stories. What are you doing to help it? What are you doing to be a fucking tack in the, in the plus column? You need to ask yourself that. You need to step back and say, hey, if it's not me who's going to fix this, who is it? Is it a burden on me? Is it on the speakers? This is shit's not about us. This is about you guys. We show up just to, to try to put our word out there. But we aren't, we are just fucking like 30 dudes. You're 219. Fuck, imagine that. Imagine if every one of you decided after this speech, because it's fucking awesome, that you're gonna go out into the world and you're gonna be like, I'm gonna fix one thing. That's 219 drops in the fucking flood that's going in the right direction. You can do that. You can be that one drop. Some of you are gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna create my own resource. I'm gonna create my own blog. Cool, that's like fucking 10 drops. Somebody else will be like, all right, I'm gonna start my own podcast. Somebody else, I'm gonna start my own business. Somebody else, hey, I'm gonna get involved in the parent. Teacher association. I'm gonna do something that's gonna help, you know, change my community. Maybe in your church, you start getting active, and like, yo, chicks, relax. <laughs> I got this. Maybe you can be that voice, knock some sense into it. Because if you're not gonna do that, you don't get to talk about the problems that we're facing because you're a part of it. That went much faster than I wanted it to. I was trying to avoid the QA. Gentlemen, that's my speech. Oh, man, no one's got questions of this man. That was a hell of a oh. speech, man. Let's give it up to him again. Yeah.
Thank you for the great speech. Since you're the family alpha, this is your choice. It's the path you've taken. I think uh, all men face uh, a desire and temptation at pretty much all moments of their life for sexual desire for various women, but we realize that that comes with consequences. And how do you transition into a long-term committed monogamous relationship? And what do you do if moments come up of desire or temptation for other people? What do you say to yourselves in those moments to remind you about the choice you've made and not break the promise? That's a good question. So first, you maintain attraction in your relationship. You know, if you have a long-term relationship, that doesn't mean you stop doing what you did to get the girl, which has already been covered. You know, I wrote a post called Creating Your Slut, which is basically, <laughs> you create an environment where sexual activity is just fantastic. So, you can't follow the whole, it's 8 o'clock, let's turn the lights off, and we're going to have missionary. All right, let's go to bed. That gets old really fast. Familiarity kills attraction. You see each other every day. If you've got a long-term relationship or marriage, that woman has seen you sick. That woman's seen you in the worst situation you've ever been in. You're there every day. She's got your goddamn clothes as you fold them up. Attraction can die fast if you allow it. Now, on the other side, what if you keep changing it up? What if you keep evolving as a man? What if you keep finding new moves, new locations, new toys to bring into the mix? You keep it going. I've been married for 10 years now. I was 10 years in October. I don't even know, August. There it is. 10 years, <laughs> 10 years in August, we, we were fucking married. And it's still, you know, the attraction's there. You're having fun. You don't get old, you know, it doesn't get tired. You can have a blast with your woman. You should be having fun. And then if you're out and you're seeing something, like, we're walking around and chicks are just, like, half-dressed in this place. I mean, like, it, Orlando's insane compared to where I'm from. You see it, it's there. I'm satisfied. My woman keeps me fully satisfied, like, drained. Like, there's no, there's no desire, you know. She takes care of me, so we're good. Hey, Hunter. Great speech. Hey. Thank you. Just going to keep my question as short as I can. Cool. I'm going on a year-long trip, right? Yep. And like you, you hit me with that speech. How can I play a bigger role in the manosphere and turn my trip into an example for everyone here? Any suggestions? You live authentically, man. You're an mm -hmm. example just by embodying it. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. By choosing to own your shit, to, to, when we say live authentically, live genuinely, that's in the moment. What you decide upon is like, what's your real answer to a question that's asked of you? Yes or no? You say yes or no. Hey, do you want to go out to eat here? Yep. You start being a man other men want to be like. And then all of a sudden, they start trying to raise their standard because they don't get left behind. You start raising your bar every single day, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually. You start trying to do more. Now, there, I could say, hey, write a blog. That'll help people. I could say podcast, YouTube. I could say a lot of things. But what it comes down to is you as a man. You can start to own your shit. You can start lighting that fire and living, at, you know, shoulders back, eyes forward. Like, hey, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to do things my way and not give a fuck. You know, live unapologetically. There's nothing wrong with being a man. Thanks. Yo. Great speech, I love your energy a lot. Um, I've met a lot of guys here that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, uh, single, never married. Uh, myself, I'm in my 50s, a uh, couple of marriages, a couple long terms, that went south. Uh, I have two daughters, uh, they're in their 20s. What would you tell a guy who does want to have children, who we don't recommend getting married, for all the reasons why, to uh, have children. Because I can tell you there's nothing more special than when my daughter was born and I cut that cord twice. Um, and I haven't heard any of that. I've been unplugging myself for a year and a half, but um, there's no talk about that. Um, I'm going to take those memories with me uh, for the rest of my life, whatever happens you know, going forward. What would you tell a a man in his 20s, 30s, or 40s who has no children, thinks he wants children because we're biologically meant to have children and pass our DNA on forward. Thank you. First off, you vet very well. Second, I'm with you. I don't know if you guys noticed when I talked about my kids, I rapid fired because that shit was starting to hit me in the heart. Vet well. Find a girl you want to have kids with, she checks all those green boxes. If I could go back, we would go to a beach. You know, this isn't about having a, a, a day for a woman to show off and become a bridezilla. It's about the, the coming together of two people. I would go to a beach. I'd find family law. I'd put a, a ring on her finger. I'd have her legally change her last name. I would not sign any license. Her and I would have a freaking party. Just bring friends and then high five. Hey, it's not an official marriage, but that's what I would call my marriage. Thank you. 
Great, appreciate your uh, authenticity. Um, I've talked to a lot of people here, and it seems like most of us found the red pill or the, the idea during a moment of crisis. And I was curious if that's kind of what led you to finding kind of the community. And then just secondly, it sounds like you've had an amazing year. You know, last year, a lot of incredible decisions that took place, and now you're up here talking about them. Maybe even go into detail of some of those hardcore decisions that led you to the stage today. All right. So I found the red pill through, when I got out of the Navy, <clears throat> I was with some motivated dudes. Like those guys, just, we did man shit. And then when I got out of the Navy, they were gone. <laughs> and there was nobody there to fill their spot. So I started looking online. I found uh, the red pill subreddit. And that's how I found it, uh, the red pill. As far as my decisions, I mean, we've faced some, some serious shit. You know, I, I'm looking at my blog wondering, what are we going to do? Are we going to upgrade? You know, I came across Craig James. We had to decide, are we going to start this fraternity? Like, this is, this is going to be a lot of work. We've got two weeks to do it. Can we do it? You just do it. You just go balls out, man. Like, a lot of people can justify why not taking action is the right way. We could have done that. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough resources. None of this. Or you can say, fuck it. Jump, go, figure it out when you land. That's what, I mean, that's my decision-making process. Just go. Err in the side of action. All right, thanks. Recently, um, Rolo touched on the origin of chivalry on uh, one of the most recent Red Man groups and how it's being used interchangeably with uh, today's courting behaviors. So I was curious, after attending a convention like this, do we need to reclassify gentlemen mannerisms, i.e. opening car doors for women as blue pill? The biggest thing you can do is get rid of any covert contract you have in your life. Whether you want to open a door, he doesn't, he, it doesn't matter. Make your own code, follow your own code. What you want to do, you do it. Not because you think it's going to get you something, but because that's what you feel a man should do. You make your code. You have children, you can pass it to them, but that's, I can't tell you your code. I definitely can't do justice to whatever Rolo put out. I'm like Rolo for eighth graders. Like, that, that just doesn't work. <laughs> but I will say, you set your code. I don't tell you what's right or wrong. But like I said about, I believe, Caleb Jones. I think that was his last name. But that guy, I don't, I'm not going to tell him what he's doing is wrong. I think it's legit. He's owning it. You've got to own what your code is. Thanks. Hey there. I hope you'll still speak to me after uh, my buddy Josh tried to pick up your wife in the bar last night. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, it's nice being here with, uh, with a, a fellow married man. I unapologetically love my wife. But I am curious uh, if you could share your, your wife's reaction to you becoming Red Pill. Um, I don't know what that really means. So when I joined the Navy, I, I owned my shit. Like, I don't we, don't, we don't, we don't have the issues that a lot of guys have with needing permission to do things. I kind of just do my thing and she does her thing and it works really well. So coming here is, it, it, she just knew that's what I had to do. There was no real issue there. Okay, <laughs> I, I want to answer it better, but I don't think I can. Okay. She do my thing, she does hers, it works. 